In this video, we're with the founder of Grosso & Kigo here in Kyoto discussing Japanese brewing equipment. Welcome. My name is Patrick Brolf and this is Coffee with April. As you can see, we're in a little bit of a different setting. We have a new person with us here today and we're going to explain why. So we're actually in Kyoto. We're standing in the Kurasu Roastery here and we have its founder with us today. And I'm going to let him introduce himself a little bit later on, right? Um, I'm in Japan because we are doing a collaboration in terms of all the April brewing equipment, which they're kind enough to kind of import and distribute exclusively actually here in Japan, right? So, Jozo, tell us a little bit about what you're up to, okay. um, where we are, and what these brewers are. Yeah, sure, of course. Well, thank you so much. Um, so, for all of you out there that, you know, love coffee, um, you might have heard of us, you might have heard of Karasu. We are based in Kyoto, Japan, with shops overseas as well, in, in Singapore and Bangkok. but. I started Karasu um, back in 2013 as an online store featuring Japanese coffee equipments. Right? So um, while I was living in Sydney, uh, Australia at the time, I saw uh, you know, the V60s, the Kalita waves sort of popping out, but at the same time saw there was a gap between um, other amazing Japanese coffee equipments that I personally knew that weren't featured in the global market. So that's sort of how it started. Um, so we've we've had uh, we've been featuring Japanese coffee equipments for eight nine years now. Um, recently, we started a new brand in Japan under Karasu called Kigu, and uh, that focuses on bringing overseas equipments um, into Japan. So sort of the reverse of what Karasu has been doing. So for example, we distribute um, a Fellow here in in Japan, um, and of course the April um, Brewers as well. So that's sort of how we are connected and uh, we're really happy to have Patrick here uh, with us in, in Kyoto and as part of sort of the SCAJ event that happened last week as well. Which, which was awesome, yeah. actually. I think we had a, like, they were super busy. Um, I was super busy, we were all very busy. Um, and it was quite amazing to see um, like so many coffee professionals kind of coming together. Like mm -hmm. in Europe, we just don't have that amount of people coming to an event. Um, and we actually like, you know, we bought a bunch of stuff from you guys even yeah. before we started to interact, yeah. right? Because you're, I've always- You're on our client list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I've always been very curious about these kind of new brewers, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of creating a brewer. Um, and to be fair, there's so much happening in Japan in terms of brewing equipment that we will never see here, right? Mm -hmm. So like I tried a new grinder at the SA event with yeah. you guys that I never tried before, new scales. We have a bunch of stuff in front of us here as well, which some of you have seen, of course, uh, and some of you may not have seen, right? Um, talk a little bit about like, maybe just in general, like what, do you see any main differences in terms of brewing filter coffee mm. in Japan from other parts of the world? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, Japan is sort of filter coffee first and uh, pour over sort of first um, in terms of sort of how uh, coffee is served inside uh, not just cafes, but you know, obviously at home as well. So a lot of people like to drink coffee at home, and so you know, to do so and pour over you know filter drippers, um, including obviously like the, something like the V60 is super popular in Japan. Something like the Kono, which I will briefly touch on, is very popular in Japan. So a lot of people, um, if you go to if you go visit uh, just a regular you know house in Japan, it, it's really common to have just a you know, a coffee dripper mm. at home, right? So it's not a espresso-based culture like a lot of sort of uh, other places in the world. It's more of a pour-over-based um, culture. And at the same time, it's slowly, like espresso lattes are slowly starting to sort of pick up in Japan as well. So we sort of have a really good balance between between the two. Which is really interesting. And I, I'm, I have to say, I thoroughly enjoy going to coffee shops, not being able to drink batch brew. Mm. Like batch brew is like a curse on the coffee world. It just doesn't taste very good. Um, and it's really nice to actually go, come to a culture where it's really focused on that pour over. Like there's no rush. There's like, yeah. we're gonna, if you want to fill the coffee, we're doing it properly. We're doing a pour over, right? And I think that makes so much sense. Um, you already mentioned Kono. We talked about Kono before. We featured Kono here as mm. well. We all love it. You have a little bit of a special relationship with the brewer, right? Yeah, well, Kono is definitely something that um, was, well, 
is the first product we had in CrossFit and is uh, the brewer that sort of um, made me think about, you know, starting CrossFit, right? Because for me personally, um, the coffee dripper that I knew um, before the V60 or before the Kalita Wave was the Kona dripper. Um, and at the time, I wasn't really into coffee, but I knew about the Kona because it's so rarely available in, in Japan. And you could see, if you go to any sort of coffee shops or um, more of the sort of the old school type of coffee shops, kisatens, or even like stores that sell coffee drippers, or um, uh, just retail stores in general that have some more lifestyle products, the Kona dripper is, is always there. So that was sort of, I guess, my aha moment in a way where I saw like V60s everywhere and, you know, Kalita waves in some parts, but I never saw the Kono. So mm. I was like, okay, there has to be sort of a gap there where it's, you know, it's so big, it, like filter coffee was becoming to be like a lot bigger globally. Um, but at the same time, still sort of like the Japanese, you know, um, a lot of the Japanese coffee equipments weren't, weren't um, being sort of featured or showcased yet. So that's sort of, you know, the Kono is sort of where it started. And Kono is, it's really has an interesting sort of history, right? Um, mm. It's like, they have, they have like a rivalry with the V60s, like who started, who invented the, the cone shaped filter. Sure, yeah. Um, and with the V60, uh, with the Hario V60, they've done an amazing job in terms of sort of branding side and marketing side. And they're basically like world, the domination, right? For um, sure, yeah. Um, but you know, Kono sort of kept, sort of is its, uh, its, its, its identity, its ethos, it, their, their family business, the sort of the third generation. Um, uh, so the, the owner, his name is Kono. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's called the Kono Brewer. Yeah. Um, and they've sort of gone uh, a different route with Hario where Hario V60, as you know, the ribs sort of go all the way up and that sort of creates a, a sort of unique sort of airflow. airflow. Um, and that's sort of, I think, sort of linked with more of the lighter roast, mm. you know, third way of cotton coffee. Um, Kono um, sort of originated with their thought was um, nail drip, which is a big thing. Um, still in Japan, as mm. you, as you mm. saw in Kyoto as well. Yeah, sure. um, so they, they, they focus on a more sort of like slower brew. Um, uh, slower sort of airflow, uh, sort of uh, restricted sort of flow rate, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it goes a bit. So obviously, it goes a bit slower than the V60. Um, but at the same time, I really find it, even in sort of lighter roasts, it gives. There's no right or wrong answer, right? So um, in lighter roasts, it gives a, a, a different sort of kind of body and sort of texture than what you would get in in the, in the V60. For right? sure, so, I think it's. I mean, contact time is it's. We often discuss contact time when we brew coffee, right? It's, and I mean, the new trend is kind of fast filters. And that's one of the cool things with Kona and why I actually discovered them in the first place is the range of filters mm -hmm. you can get, uh, which a lot of different kind of brewers don't have that full range. And I think it's really interesting. Yeah. But like longer contact time brews, let's say, I mean, a longer contact time being, let's say 220 up to three minutes in my world that's usually only beneficial for your brewing, right? So I would say in general, the biggest challenge with people brewing coffee today is that they actually brew too fast. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few other things in front of us as well. Do you just want to quickly kind of touch on, I mean, Kalita we've seen, but these are to be fair, two editions that it's quite hard to find, at least in Europe. Mm. I think this sort of copper one is a little bit more easier to find and this mm -hmm. sandstone Sagan is a little bit harder to find. Sure. Yeah. And sort of what I love about sort of Kalita, uh, what they're doing is they're really trying to sort of focus, you know, Japanese sort of craftsmanship mm. a, a lot more, right? So obviously you have the regular sort of mass produced stainless one and sort of the glass one and the sort of ceramic one. But this is sort of like a, their limited range and they started off with this copper and they have a stainless one as well. But this is made in uh, Tsubame uh, Niigata in, Jap in Japan, which is sort of the, one of the biggest uh, manufacturers uh, area to, for, for stainless, stainless steel. Uh, that's where the Takahiro kettle is made. Okay, sure. yeah. yeah. So um, and yeah, so this is sort of where they started with the the collaboration, and so this is a sort of second collaboration that they had with. Mm. Um, uh, it's a sandstone and it's made in Hasami. It's made uh, Hasamiyaki, which is uh, based in Nagasaki Prefecture. So that's sort of you know they they've done a really uh, good job in sort of collaboration and trying to feature 
you know, different sort of craftsmanship and different sort of um, ways that um, Japanese sort of products are made. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, just a cool collaboration that they have and that's something that we really respect and that's something that we really want to, you know, try to feature uh, a, lot, a lot in Karasa as well. Yeah. It's super cool. It's, I mean, side note here, and I know it's not really relevant, but I'm just going to say it anyway because I saw like yesterday on the uh, on your shelves in one of the stores, mm -hmm. uh, I saw a brewer, a kind of style of brewer I've been using as well without any good results. But this kind of texture reminds me of it, where it's basically a, a clay brewer mm -hmm. without a filter, yeah. yeah, and then like clay is the is the filter. Mm. which I've never been able to use in a, in a, in a kind of a good way, mm -hmm. but that's also like another kind of generation of brewer that sure. I've only seen in Japan. Sure, yeah. Um, and that's something that, what, what is the brand you guys are featuring there? Uh, it's called Arita 39, I think is the name of the brand, but yeah, okay, like yeah. you said, it's, it's sort of like a uh, ceramic sort of filter that you don't need, like a paper filter. You could just, it's just, it, it's, it's a mix of um, sort of ceramic that has sort of pores, uh, natural yeah, sort of sure, pores, sure, and then sure, sure. Yeah, it's actually a, it's a water filter. Yeah, it's kind of like a water filter. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's literally yeah. what it is. Yeah. Really difficult to brew with, but kind of fun, right? <laughs> yeah. um, we have the torch in front of us. Mm -hmm. I am pretty sure we have featured the torch on this channel. I might be wrong, and if I'm wrong, we're going to do it. Uh, but if I'm right, Google it and you'll find it. Uh, but also like a cool, you know, cool brewer. Um, really actually is quite similar to a lot of the more modern flapped brewers. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when these guys started. Is this a new yeah, product this or is, an old product? This is, so we've had relationships with sort of Nakabaya-san um, that sort of makes, the, makes this brewer for uh, pretty much close to when Cross has started. So like okay. seven, seven, eight years now. So um, they had another uh, dripper called the the donut tripper, which is ah, more yeah, 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 sure. more geared towards like a darker darker yeah. roast coffee, and this was his approach to a more lighter roast, um, sort of I guess a third wave kind of sort of culture that was um, sort of starting to brew up, um, and and yeah, it has a it has a large hole on the bottom, so some small holes, so uh, more uh, more airflow. Uh, it it does brew faster from from how we brew uh, uh, compared to a Kalita way, for example. Mm. Um, and again, it's just sort of the relationships that we have. So Nakabari san lives in sort of Guma Prefecture, which is uh, you know uh, maybe two three hours away from from Tokyo, mm. up in the sort of mountainside. Mm. He's come to Kyoto a few times. I just I've just missed him like every single time for some reason. So we've had this relationship for, for eight years now. Yeah. And so unfortunately, they've never been able to meet or just over the phone and, and email. But oh. he's, he's an amazing guy, just really sort of focused on coffee. But also, you know, just beautiful um, working with sort of Japanese sort of ceramic makers. And also this, you know, wood base uh, oh. is sort of made locally as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he has an eye for, um, you know, craftsmanship and sort of aesthetics. The pink and sort of blue color, I think a lot of people really like as well. You know, it's something different, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's it's just, it's a fun brewer to brew with. You can use the Kalita Wave. You can fit in the V60. You can fit in the fan shape filter, which is quite still quite you can, popular. How, how do you fit in the V60 in there? Uh, so it just so the V60 just sits in here, and then like the tip sort of comes ah. out here. So you can you can brew with the V60 if you want. Okay, to. so that's kind of the idea. Yeah. And, it like tor yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Okay. Yeah, and then also the sort of fan shape dripper, which yeah. isn't yeah. really used outside of, not as much outside of Japan. In no, Japan, sure. it's yeah. still like really heavily used yeah. um, for a lot of the more old school places. So it fits that as well. So it's just, um, uh, just very creative. Versatile. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. creative uh, for him. Cool. And then yeah, just a fun little dripper too. What is to what is this? Because like one of the the reasons why I kind of come to love Japan is because you find all these like quirky, yeah, small handmade stuff yeah. that you would probably never really find, yeah, yeah, anywhere else. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about what what this is. Sure. So this is uh, made by Tsujiwa, um, sort of metalworks, and they do uh, different sort of metalworks. These are all sort of handmade, hand sort of crafted, hand sort of 
sort of twined. So um, they could make it themselves at home if they uh, want if, to. If they, if they wanted to, I would, I would challenge anyone to sort of try to do this yeah, at sure. home. A little bit um, different. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, there's a silver one and there's a copper one as well. Uh -huh. So we're sold out on the copper one, so we didn't have what, that. What, but is there any difference apart from the visual? Uh, it's, it's mostly a, a visual thing or it's yeah. just mostly like a material um, thing. But um, yeah, they're just right around the corner of where Kras Ebisugawa is. Um, uh, These local sort of makers, they've, they've been doing business since 1933, um, I imagine, just uh, making sort of these metal, sort of metal works for kitchens, uh, metal sort of nets um, that you can sort of um, fry fish on, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, they've, they've um, been trying out these sort of coffee sort of type drippers and um, they can only make five per month, which is, um, yeah, so it's, it's, again, it's all handmade and they only have a few people that are working on sort of a different product range. Um, so so we've, uh, we've had a conversation with them. So everything that we, they make, we try to, uh, we try to sort of purchase from them. Yeah, um, sure. yeah and every time so we restock it on the website, except, especially the copper one, for some reason people really love sort of the copper, I guess, um, you know, how, how the design is, how it looks aesthetics wise. Yeah, that's a contrast, sure. Yeah, so like, it, it's only five. Um, so mm. it's, it's a quite um, pricey, uh, you know, relatively speaking, um, product, but you know, it's just, yeah, it's just amazing. It's just sort of, it just really tells you sort of um, a, a story and it's just the approach of sort of how Japanese people sort of you know, really appreciate sort of handmade stuff and sort of craftsmanship. And that sort of goes really well with the approach that Japanese people have towards coffee as well. So, mm, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a really um, interesting product that, that we have and uh, it's, it's, it's local, which is great. Um, yeah. Awesome, that's super cool. Uh, so the point here is obviously to, to introduce everyone, uh, but also we're gonna, if I'm allowed to, I'm going to buy all of these, <laughs> yeah. at least some of them. Uh, and we're going to bring them back to Copenhagen and we are, of course, going to do a little bit more in-depth videos uh, with this. Uh, Kurasu has their own YouTube channel as well, so check that out. I guess you do brewers and stuff. Yeah, we do. In of course we, you do. Yeah, introduce brewers, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and I know they also have some new products coming up, um, so stay tuned. I'm going to buy one of their new grinders also mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is really cool, um, and, and we're also making our own drippers as well. Uh, so we're we're working on that as well, both the immersion and also like a pour over. An immersion, uh, like a, like a switch style. Uh, well, well, you'll see. You'll see. Oh, you'll see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they will send us <laughs> yes, some whenever, yes. whenever that's time. That's yeah. super cool. Awesome. Um, Thank you so much, yeah. like both for hosting me here yeah, in Japan, which has been amazing. Uh, we couldn't have done that without them. Uh, and also just for being a part of the, the video and sharing a little bit of insight. Yeah, of and um, we'll make sure to feature more content like this in the future as well. And again, we're gonna do a little bit more in-depth videos of, of all of this. Um, but now we're gonna go and eat food. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for, for watching and um, we'll see you next time. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.